Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service of worship this morning. I want to say a big hello to all our church community who have tuned in to listen to this service online. And if you are visiting us online for the very first time, you are also welcome. As we come uh, to sing God's praise and hear from his word this morning, let's just take a moment and hear some words of scripture as we open our service of worship. So I want to share with you this morning some words from Hebrews 4, verses 14 through to 16. And it says this, Since then we have a great high priest, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Therefore, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And so that's exactly what we want to do in our praise this morning, to draw near to the throne of God's grace. So let's pray for a moment, and then I'm going to hand over to Rhonda and Glenn, and they're going to lead us in a time of praise. So let's be still, and let's pray. Father God, we pray this morning that, that we would boldly proclaim your name in praise as we come to worship you and to give thanks. Help us to draw near the throne of your grace and to receive all that you have for us this morning. So we pray that in power you would come, for we ask it in your mighty and your holy and your precious name. And everybody said, Amen. So let's worship together.
Let's pray. Father, from our separate homes today, we join in prayer to praise and thank you for the blessings and joys of life, for those we love, for friendship, for those who supply our needs. Above all, we thank you for the redemption and healing of all the ills of life through the passion and resurrection of your Son. Amen. Lord, we pray for our church ministers, for our new Archbishop and the unique challenges he faces at this time, for our Rector William and for Lucy as she leads our service today. May they have strength for their work, maturity in their faith and wisdom in their judgments to proclaim the truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in these difficult times, Help us to trust you when we fail to see you and our way is overshadowed by sorrow or doubt. 
reveal yourself to us again, that we might walk once more in the light of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for wisdom for our government and our health advisors. Guide their decisions and help them to communicate their plans clearly. Help them to make the decisions that would quickly and effectively stop the spread of the virus and grant them energy at this time while working such long hours and under such great stress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you would protect those in our world who are most vulnerable to the coronavirus, for those without access to good medical care, and for those countries with fewer resources and the infrastructure to respond effectively. Give all governments wisdom as they put in place preventive measures so that new cases might be identified and quickly isolated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the water of life, the healing rain to all those in need. So we come to you now for all those known to us in St Mark's who currently are ill in body or mind, for those in hospital, and for those awaiting surgery. Turn our caring into their courage and our faith into their will to get well. And bless those in our congregation who are mourning the recent loss of a relative or friend. Heal their brokenness with your gentle touch that they may be whole again and know your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And wherever you are praying at this moment, remember, God is always with us. There is no place where he is not. Wherever we go, there God is. Now and always, he embraces us, looks on us with his mercy, and is always ready to hear us when we call. So as we look to the week ahead, in circumstances that we could never have imagined just a few short weeks ago, Lord, may we live in faith, walk in love, and be renewed in hope until the world reflects your glory this day and always. Amen. As we conclude our prayers today, would you please join with me now in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The reading this morning is from John chapter 8, verses 12 to 20. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, where is your father? You do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. Here ends the reading.
so that we could have a, a more fuller, a more deeper revelation of who you are. So come and bless us, empower us, and strengthen us through your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This morning we're going to be thinking about another claim that, that Jesus made about himself in the Gospel of John. And if you remember, last week we, we learned um, that Jesus actually referred to himself as the bread of life, the one who sustains us, the one who strengthens us. And this week we are going to be looking at a, another claim, another bold statement that Jesus made when he said, I am the light of the world. So this morning there really are two things that I want us to focus on from this passage, the claim and the promise. Let's have a think about what Jesus actually meant when, when he spoke those words, I am the light of the world. And then let's think about what, what that promise means and looks like for us today. So firstly, the claim. If you read in verse 12 of that passage that was read to us earlier by Shirley, it says this, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. This statement is hugely significant because light is incredibly symbolic throughout scripture and it has been used since the very beginning of time. Just look at Genesis 1 where it reads, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. But the earth was formless, it was dark, it was empty, it was void. And, it's, and it was into that darkness and that emptiness that, that God spoke light. We also read about the prophets in scripture who spoke about a light that, that was coming. And then we read in this gospel of John today that, that Jesus himself is claiming to be the light of the world. One of the things I love the most about um, reading scripture is learning more and more about Jesus' incredible ability to speak into any situation or any circumstance and make a point. Jesus has this incredible way of redirecting people's thinking, redirecting people's perspectives like nobody else can do. Jesus also has this incredible way of drawing people to himself. And so as we think about that, we need to understand the context of what was going on as Jesus made this claim about himself. John 7 sets the stage for us. There's a festival going on. It's called the Feast of Tabernacles. And you can go home or you can at home read more about it later on. Uh, this Feast of Tabernacles was a festival that, that caused people to come together to remember before God, to celebrate all that he had done in leading the Israelites out of captivity. Now, this particular uh, festival would have been one of the main festivals for the Jews. And it was during this Feast of Tabernacles that something called the illumination of the temple took place. And basically what that meant was there were four huge golden menorahs, or as we would know them as lampstands, and they would have been about 75 feet high. And these lampstands, these menorahs, were lit in the temple. Not only were they lit, they acted like torches. In fact, not only would they have lit the temple, they would have lit the city of Jerusalem. People would have seen it for miles. And it's right in the middle of that festival, as those lamps are lit, that Jesus chooses the right moment to make this claim. He stands in the middle of this, this public festival where, where lots of people had gathered, and he speaks right to the religious leaders, and he says, I am the light of the world. Just picture the scene for a moment. 
Jesus is standing where these huge menorahs, these huge lampstands are illuminating the city and he says, I am the light of the world. He's saying to all those who were there, you see how these, these lampstands commemorate the fact that the Lord went ahead of the Israelites and led them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or night. In the same way that they commemorate that in the book of Exodus that we just read, so is he the light of the world. Do you see what's happening here? Jesus used this festival, this moment, to reveal his identity as Jesus the Messiah. But the Pharisees didn't get it. They didn't understand his claim. In fact, they told Jesus that his claim of who he was was totally invalid. They told him that his testimony was not true. And Jesus answered them back by saying, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and I know where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. You see, the, the Pharisees are, are caught up in trivial things. They have the Son of God standing right in front of their very eyes and they're blind to the things of Christ. They're spiritually blind. They, they don't see or, or recognize his glory. In fact, one commentator said this, how tragic that these experts in the law did not even know their own Messiah as he stood before them. These Pharisees claimed to know the law of God, but they did not know the God of the law. So this claim, I am the light of the world, comes as a challenge to the religious leaders. And also as a reminder that, that just as the pillar of fire led the people out of slavery and bondage to sin and into a relationship with God, so he offers those to come and follow him. So that is his claim. I am the light of the world. So if that's his claim, then what's his promise? Well, the other part of that verse in verse 12 also says this. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That word, whoever, is actually an invitation to all of us to come and follow him. But what does it actually mean for us that if we follow him, we will never walk in darkness? Well, it doesn't mean that we won't face difficult times. It doesn't even mean that we, we won't sin. But what it does mean is that his promise to us and to all those that know him and follow him, the one thing that will never happen when we follow him is that we won't be rejected by him and we won't be forgotten by him. Because in him, he offers us his light that enables us to see him differently. Some familiar words from Psalm 23 reiterate this point. It says this. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, eternal life. Why? Because when we follow him, we have all of Jesus. Not just a bit of him, but we have all of him. And if you truly accept these words as a follower, if you accept that invitation, whoever follows me, then it will be life-changing. You see, spiritual, spiritual darkness is a place of ignorance. Spiritual darkness is a, is a place of fear, a place of separation. But he's saying that if you choose to follow me, the light of the world, you'll experience connection, you'll experience his grace, his mercy, his love, his peace, and an abundance of his goodness. Even when a crisis 
hits or when despair comes upon us. Even as we try to navigate our way through everything that, that's happening in our country, in our world at the moment. Even when our routines and our normal day-to-day -day activities are interrupted. When we follow him and trust him for who he is, he will make sure that we never walk in darkness because his rod and his staff will comfort us. In Christ, darkness is dispelled. Jesus is the light of the world. He came to open our eyes and to, to make us see him. The one who gives us physical life also came to give us spiritual life. So today, you need to know that, that in your sin, he is the light of the world. In your pain, he is the light of the world. In this pandemic, he is the light of the world. Because his promise is this. You will not walk in darkness if you choose to follow him. And so, this morning, I wonder, do you accept his claim? And are you living out of his promises? Do you accept his claim and are you living out of his promises? Or are you living in that, that spiritual darkness? Have you not yet come to see and taste that the Lord is good? If that is you, can I encourage you this morning to, to step out of that darkness and to walk in the light of Christ? Because as we do, the, the, the way of life becomes incredibly clear. When we accept the light of Christ, we receive and walk and trust in all that he has for us. So this morning, as we close in prayer, do you claim the truth that he is, I am the light of the world, and are you living out of his promises? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for that um, incredible truth in, in your gospel that, that you are the light of the world. And we thank you that, that you offer us an invitation to step out of darkness and to walk in the light of Christ. We thank you that we have a, a promise from you that, that in you that nothing can separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus. And so this morning... Whatever we may be walking through, whatever darkness we may be dealing with, help us to look to the light of Christ. Help us to walk with you. So come, Holy Spirit, move in and through us. For we ask it in your mighty and your precious name. Amen. As we draw our service to a, a close, we, we want to sing again. And our, our next song is called Tremble. Uh, and it speaks about how, how Jesus makes the darkness tremble. Uh, and I really want you to join in with that song at home as we respond to, to all that we have heard this morning. And let us proclaim for ourselves that he is indeed the light of the world. So, Let's sing together.
Father God, we thank you for this service, this time of praise and worship. We thank you for everybody who is at home connecting online and we trust and we pray that they have been blessed and nourished and strengthened by your word. And we pray that, that this week, that no matter what happens or what we walk through, that we would know and claim and hold on to the promise that you are the light of the world. So bless us, watch over us and protect us until we meet again in your name. Amen. God bless you and have a great week.